This is not a Gen 3 Pokemon game running on an emulator. This is actually a 100% web-based JavaScript made Pokemon game running on Safari on my iPhone. Now I know what your next question is going to be. How can I play this? Well, unfortunately you can't yet, but wait, don't click away. Let me explain. This is actually a passion project I've been working on for about a year now. So I gather the courage of becoming a content creator and share out my progress with the amazing Pokemon community here on YouTube. This is the very first video I've done since like 2009. So bear with me. Okay. So before moving on to what you're really interested in, which is the game, I'll wrap up this yapping session, just introducing a little bit about myself and what I envision this channel to be about. Please, somebody in the comments, just put the timestamp of when the yapping session is over. I should have it right here. So comment that for other people who are watching that are not really interested in this part. Welcome to Cozy Coding, or I don't know, I might change the name later and you can call me the Cozy Coding guy or honestly, you can pick, you can pick what you call me. <laughs> and I'm just an average software engineer and Pokemon enthusiast. So what's this channel going to be about? Well, here I'll post progress updates on the project, show you my development process, and hopefully soon do a careful low key rollout of the game so that Nintendo doesn't sue me f like many of you have already commented. Future videos will showcase way less of my face and way less introductory yapping and it's more going to be screen recordings of the game, progress updates on the project, and maybe some code snippets here and there. If that's something that interests you, please let me know in the comments. You can like or subscribe or not. You know, I think if it's meant to be, the YouTube algorithm will bring me right back to you. All right, enough yapping. Let's get to the details on the game. Well, so this is the game. Uh, what's it called? Uh, it doesn't have a name yet, so please leave suggestions in the comments. I've been solely focusing on making the game work, so the current maps are not all that interesting. We've got the peaceful test town, which features three sections. We've got the playground area, which I used to test out the 3D movement, which is implemented, by the way. You can go both under and over the bridge. We've got downtown test town, which features the Pokemon Center, the Pokemart, both of which fully function. And we've also got the bike store and the random house, neither of which have been implemented yet. And we've got the northern area, which has a couple of large patches of grass. And more interestingly, the entrance to our next map, spooky forest which i did actually put in some thought to it i was inspired by petalburg forest for this one it's sort of linear but it includes two mandatory trainer fights and a few sections you can explore for items here i tested the ledges that you can jump over in just one direction and in terms of maps that's literally it for now again i've been focusing on the many many mechanics available in a pokemon game and i'll go ahead and list them in quite a bit of detail so that it doesn't look like I've spent this whole year doing nothing. The thing is making new maps is fun and it's easy, you know, especially if you're, if you're creative and you like designing maps and that sort of thing. I know some game developers that don't really enjoy the process of map making that much, but you know, the bigger you make the game and the, the more content you add to it, the harder it is to fix bugs that appear deep in the code, right? You, it's more code changes everywhere. So, I want to keep things simple as I develop the core mechanics of the game. And when the time is right, I'll go ahead and focus a little bit more on the map and on the storyline and all that good stuff. So in terms of mechanics or features, I'll divide this section into two parts, which are the same two parts that I've kind of been separating in my coding efforts. So we got overworld mechanics and battle mechanics. So let's talk battle mechanics first. It certainly feels like I'm pretty far into the development of the battle engine, but there's still quite a bit to go. Currently, only single battles are supported. I know, I know, give me a break. But of course, double battles are part of the roadmap and 100% within the realm of my technical capabilities, probably. You can currently get into a battle by running into a wild Pokemon in the tall grass or by starting a trainer battle. Stat calculations, stat modifiers, damage calculation formulas, all that good stuff was taken from Bulbapedia's Gen 3 definitions. So that means that at least for now, Pokemon battles should feel pretty much exactly like the Gen 3 games, except that I did implement the physical special split. I will allow players to toggle that on and off. And in general, I want to make this game super customizable so that, you know, players can just 
you know, go crazy with all the customizations and really cater the experience to themselves. All right, so what about moves? Currently, we have four types of moves that we support. Uh, we've got your typical basic damage dealing moves. These moves just deal damage, no additional effect, that's it. We also have damage dealing moves with an additional effect in the form of a volatile status condition. Similarly, we've got moves that deal damage but also cause a stat modifier. And we have pure status moves as well. All in all, it's well over 100 moves that currently work and any moves that don't work or that are not like completely implemented they just don't do anything it's kind of like splash or something and there's actually quite a few groups of moves that i actually do need to implement there's also moves that have their own implementation like bide for example counter uh what other moves and you probably noticed that the animation for the moves is always the same it's the tackle animation I am in the progress of building a battle animation engine as well, so don't worry, battle animations are a part of the roadmap. Abilities have not made it into the game as well, at least not functioning yet, but they are 100% part of the roadmap. So in summary, the battle engine is pretty simple in terms of moves, but it's overall pretty solid. Adding more to it isn't necessarily that difficult, it's just that I've been focusing way more on the overworld stuff. But I almost forgot the most important feature. Yes, you can catch Pokemon. You can use Pokeballs, Great Balls, Ultra Balls, and Master Balls. They all work. They all have their catch rates as they should be. But the sprite is always the same one. So I got to change that. But it works. And, and, you know, the animations are a little bit off. But you can catch Pokemon. The catching formulas were copied from Bulbapedia Gen 3. So catching Pokemon should feel exactly like the Gen 3 games. All right, let's talk a little bit about the overworld. The overworld development is coming along really nicely. I'd argue even better than the battle engine. There's so much you can already do, but I'll start with the basics. As a player, you have the ability to walk around and explore. You can read signs, talk to NPCs. You can move both in 2D and 3D. The 3D movement stuff took me quite a bit to fix and figure out. You can warp between maps. You can pick up overworld items. You can look at your items in the fully functioning bag menu. You can actually use your items as well, even TMs and HMs. But what if you're out of items? Well, you can head over to the Pokemart because yes, it's fully functional. You can buy and sell stuff at your leisure, just like in the real game. The Pokemon Center works as well, but Nurse Joy's just not there. I think she's taking a break or something and the animation isn't really done, but you can go up to the counter and get your Pokemon healed. Another awesome feature, one of my favorites actually, is the summary menu. At first glance, it looks pretty much like the fire red summary menu because I did rip the fire red sprites for this, but I expanded the stats page to include both EVs and IVs. As an avid player of the Gen 3 games and as someone who plays on physical hardware, tracking EVs and determining IVs manually has always been such a pain in the ass. So I went ahead and saved us all the trouble. I'm sure this feature is going to be a fan favorite for the more hardcore players. All right, so let's talk about what's on the roadmap in terms of overworld functionality. Overworld HMs, not a thing yet. Pokedex is not a thing yet, but I'm currently working on it. My next video is probably going to be on that. The PC storage system, not implemented yet. I'm low-key dreading that one a little bit. I want it to feel like a Gen 3 experience, but the original Gen 3 PC is just a little bit shit, honestly. <laughs> it's just so clunky. You can't really sort your Pokemon or anything. I think I want to make something that kind of feels Gen 3, but is way more convenient. So let me know in the comments if you have any ideas or suggestions about that. I mean it. I'm going to be reading every single comment in this video. I have like 30 subscribers, so <laughs> I'm not expecting that much, but I'll read them and I mean it. The bike still not a thing. Fishing is not a thing either. Again, both things that I will implement, just not at the top of my priorities list just yet. Town map is of course not available and it won't be until I actually start building out the maps for the final game. As you can see, a lot has been done, but there's so much more that still needs to be done. And I find it flattering reading the comments saying like, when is it gonna drop? What, what's the name of the game? And I honestly don't have answers for any of that. For now, I'm just going to take this project one feature at a time, but I'll be sure to show you guys and gals all the new features and all the progress as it comes. I do want to get a little bit more technical and talk about 
you know, different code snippets and challenges that I came across while developing the game. I'm thinking the next few videos are probably going to be more devlog style. But before I go, I want to take advantage that this is my very first video and set this expectation straight. I am not trying to make money off of this. I don't intend to sell this game on any platform. This is purely a passion project spawning from both my love for the franchise and my love for software development. Nintendo Game Freak, if you're watching, just think twice before suing me. That said, when the time is right, I do want to share the game out with the community. You got to be careful, but it's something that I want to do. And I'll be sharing information about playtesting soon. I know that a few of you have already asked about that. I did receive a message about joining the team. And first of all, I'm flattered, uh, but the team is literally just me right now. I think it would be really cool to have more people working on this in the future. But for now, I think I just want to keep it to myself. Depending on the project's trajectory, I'll likely ask for more developers, digital artists, writers, all that good stuff. If you want to invest in this channel long term, subscribe, stick around because uh, I might be reaching out for that help. And that's finally it. I appreciate you staying all the way to the end. Like I said earlier, this is my first video in like 15 years. so. Please let me know in the comments if there's something about my editing style that annoyed you, uh, something about the game that excited you. And if you have any questions about game dev or starting out your own game like this one, please leave a comment below. I'll respond to it like 100% guaranteed. I promise. Okay, now that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Stay cozy and I'll see you next time.